What's up, gangsters? I have decided on a spur of the moment to make a quick video. Um, that's an unusual thing for me because uh, I know this will surprise some of you guys given some of the nonsense that comes out of my mouth. Uh, but I normally try to think through what I'm going to say beforehand, so this is unusual. Hopefully it won't be a disaster. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Blitzkrieg Modeling uh, posed a follow-up question to uh, Andy's question of how we got started in modeling. And his question is a really good one, and that is, why do you build what you build? And uh, <laughs> as some of you guys know, um, that's a subject that's been getting uh, quite a bit of attention on the old interwebs lately. And... Uh, so hopefully without generating too much controversy, I'm going to open up a little bit and answer that question in my own way. Now, on one level, it's a pretty simple answer. Uh, if you look at my history of model making and if you look at my stash, you would very quickly say, Will is an airplane guy. And that's totally true. I have loved flight and everything about flight since I was just a wee small lad. Um, I came very close to uh, doing uh, my military service as a Marine Corps aviator. Um, life decisions changed that for me, but I've always been fascinated with flying, and I've always taken every chance I've ever had to go up in whatever kind of aircraft I could. Um, you know, helicopters, Piper Cubs, Cessnas, you know, whatever it is, I love it. Um, so, from a fundamental, just basic sort of standpoint, I think airplanes are just sexy, and I love them. Um, but it does go a little deeper than that for me. I Because I like all kinds of vehicles, and as a guy with an engineering and a mechanical background... Uh, there are things about all sorts of vehicles that are interesting to me. Um, and, you know, so I think that tanks are cool and Jeeps are cool and race cars are cool. And, you know, sci-fi kits like the Falca that I've been working on are cool um, because I like the way they look. There are things about them that just appeal to me about the design. Um but it also gets a little bit to the story of what they can do. Uh, you know, for example, one of my favorite aircraft is the Typhoon and the Tempest, um, which I just don't get. I don't know why they had to call it something different because, I mean, they're basically the same airplane. But anyway, that's another, that's a different rant. Um, I love the way that the Typhoon looks. Um, and when I made a pilgrimage to the RAF Museum in London specifically to see the last remaining typhoon, uh, it was, you know, one of those ha kind of moments for me. Um, but I also just love knowing about the airplane. I mean, that 24-cylinder Napier Sabre engine, what a beast. I mean, that was a man's airplane. You just can't deny that. I mean, those things killed a few pilots, and you definitely had to be on your game to, uh, to to operate one of those things. And, you know, and I like that. That appeals to me. So, you know, knowing the story uh, about it, I mean, but it, it's not necessarily just the performance of it. I mean, I chose to build Franz Stiegler's ME262 because of the whole Franz Stiegler story. I, you know, I love the I love the 262 from an engineering standpoint, and, and I think it's a beautiful airplane. But I chose his sub his aircraft in particular because I had read the book um, about Franz Stiegler's whole story. I'm building the Doolittle uh, B25 because uh, Doolittle is a guy that I consider to be a true American hero. Um, you know, so I like the backstory on this stuff. That that always appeals to me, and the more of that that I can fold into the subject, um, the the more fun that I have. Um, but yet there is even another layer to it. Um, I, I, uh, and this is going to get a little bit, this gets a little bit metaphysical, I suppose. One reason that I choose airplanes almost every time over tanks is because, 
Um, even though I think tanks are interesting and the weathering possibilities and the diorama possibilities just are, uh, they're like, you know, uh, a smorgasbord of gourmet food to, to my, to my creative sensibilities. Um, airplanes are uh, for more than one thing, okay? A tank is a killing machine, all right? Let's be honest. There's no other reason to have a tank than to blow shit up and ruin people's day. And, you know, that's part of warfare, and I'm objective about that, and it is what it is. But... There's a little bit of the pacifist in me, I guess. Um, you know, I think every every good soldier fundamentally hates war. And, uh, and so there's a little bit of that in me when I think about building tanks as opposed to making the choice of building um, an airplane because I see airplanes as more noble. Uh, they are not only one of the single most defining and revolutionary technologies in human history, but... They're for many things, you know. Uh, I see crop dusters flying by here all the time. You know, obviously, we carry people all over the world in airplanes. We do stunts in them. We race them. We do, you know, airplanes to me are just, uh, uh, you know, they're just fascinating because they, they, they can do so many things that are just so cool and fun and beneficial to human society as opposed to just being all about... The, the pain and the destruction. So I have to admit that that figures into it a little bit for me. Now, let's go to yet another layer. And this, you know, is where things get potentially a little bit controversial because I also choose whose subjects I build with some thought. And uh, not everybody, you know, does, and that's fine. Um, but uh, I confess that I have a little bit of difficulty in building uh, German and Japanese subjects from World War II. Um, and, but before I get into that, let me back up to why I have always only built World War II, because I've honestly never built an airplane newer than 1945 vintage. And let me explain that first. Um, I love World War I airplanes. I love jets. I love all of those planes too. But for me, World War II is the pinnacle of several things. It's the height of the propeller-driven technology. Um, it, it, you know, it was pushed as far as it could possibly be pushed um, during World War II for obvious reasons. And I, I just, you know, I, that just fascinates me. Um, you know, from an engineering and a technology standpoint, I love that. But it also sort of represents, I mean, World War II in general sort of represents what I feel like is a tipping point where we went from a sort of an individual combat type thing with air warfare where two guys went up against each other and, you know, it was last man standing. You basically had to be eyeball to eyeball with that guy. Uh, you know, you could say, yeah, I'm just shooting down another airplane. But you knew that there was a guy in that in that aircraft, and you couldn't just blow him out of the sky from five miles away with a Sidewinder missile. And so for me, that sort of captures the essence of the, you know, one night uh, against another night, or, you know, two gunfighters having a showdown. And, you know, look, I'm a dude, and there's a certain amount of romanticism uh, that, that I'm automatically going to apply to that, whether it's realistic or not. Uh, you know, I, I just have a lot of respect for the heroism and the genuine bravery that those guys had to bring to the table. And especially when you consider that so many of those World War II fighter pilots were kids. I mean, you're talking about, you know, 19, 20, 21 year old guys uh, who were thrown into the middle of extraordinarily challenging situations. So. Uh, that's why I love World War II aircraft in particular. Now, why do I have trouble uh, building German and Japanese uh, subjects? Um, they were the bad guys. Look, that's the bottom line. They were the bad guys. And anybody who denies that is either, uh, you know, rewriting history in their own minds or, uh, you know, 
maybe seeing things in a way that I can't even really contemplate. And so I have some issues with that um, because I don't ever want to, you know, justify or glorify any of the things that I feel like, uh, you know, that were evil about what the Germans and the Japanese did. Um, and so I choose my German and Japanese subjects as carefully as possible. Um, you know, I just built a Zero recently, and I don't know anything about the pilots of the I, You know, I don't know anything about those guys. Um, uh, so I didn't, you know, I just built one that was generic. But when I built Stigler's 262, that was very specific. And part of it was because um, after reading the book about Stigler, I had a new insight that honestly helps me a lot when I think about building German subjects in particular, and that was this. Um, Stigler himself was not a fan of the Nazi party. Most Luftwaffe pilots were not members of the Nazi party, according to him. Um, and he, in fact, was, uh, like a lot of other uh, Luftwaffe pilots, um, really opposed to the policies that the Luftwaffe leadership uh, put forth and tried to, uh, tried to enforce. And, you know, what, what I think you have to recognize when you, when you get into to history on a real human level like that is that you're dealing with individuals as opposed to governments. And while a government may choose, or the leadership of a government may choose to pursue evil, and the individuals that are subject to the will of that government may have to carry forward with those policies, that doesn't necessarily mean that they as individuals are bad people. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of those guys were basically forced to do what they had to do. Um, to protect their families, uh, to protect their own lives. Um, and that's a choice that, quite frankly, none of us can really understand, you know, especially if you're an American. We, we have never been in that situation where we've been basically told at gunpoint, you will fight to protect this country whether you agree with what we're doing or not. And so I try to be... Uh, uh, I try to look at the bigger picture, uh, you know, as much as that's possible um, when I'm thinking about these things. And, uh, you know, I would argue that that's good for all of us to do. There's nothing wrong with considering um, your model making activities on nothing more than an aesthetic level. Look, hey, I I'm a dude. Uh, I'm a squirrel. I pursue things that are shiny. <laughs> I get it. And if that's as deep as you go, hey, awesome. Um, but there's also nothing wrong with considering things on a deeper level. And I think that that's important to having a true understanding of history. And uh, that figures into it for me. So, uh, look, I know that that was a really long answer to what should probably be a very, <laughs> a very simple question. But, um, you know, anybody who knows me very well knows that uh, nothing is simple with me. That uh, regardless of... of uh, you know, what you may see or think, um, you know, there's, uh, uh, there's a little more going on under the surface than uh, I'll always admit to. So anyway, thanks to Blitzkrieg for uh, putting the question out there. Um, I hope that this answer was uh, worth listening to and that at least gives you a little bit more insight as to how I think about it. All right, guys, I hope you're having a great day. And as always, take care. Much love.